हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर नेहा पाटनी सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ल्यूब्रिकेंट वी ऑल नो दैट व्हेन वी यूज एनी मशीन एंड द मशीन पार्ट्स आर सपोज्ड टू स्लाइड ओवर ईच अदर और आर रोलिंग ओवर ईच अदर देयर इज अ रेजिस्टेंस प्रोड्यूस्ड ड्यूरिंग देयर मूवमेंट एंड दैट इज नोन एज फ्रिक्शन नो फ्रिक्शन हैज मेनी इफेक्ट्स बेसिकली इट रिड्यूसेस द एफिशिएंसी ऑफ मशीन and obviously by causing lot of wear and tear in the machine and that time the amount of energy is released in the form of heat and this is actually responsible for the wear and tear and that is how there is non uniform motion of the machine and the efficiency gets reduced so we need to use a chemical substance which reduces friction between these two sliding surfaces and that substance is known as lubricant there are many functions of lubricant it can act as a corrosion inhibitor also like if you coat a machine with a uh, oil which is working as a uh, lubricant there it does not allow that machine to get corroded because that surface will not come in contact with the oxygen and since there is no oxidation so there will be no corrosion so sometimes it act as a corrosion inhibitor also it does not allow foreign particle to come into the machine it reduces the wear and tear of machine and provides relative smooth motion also at the same time it can act as a sealing agent also so sometimes you can just use it as a seal so it does not allow any particle to move in and it could be air also it act as a coolant you can see here that the two parts are rubbing over each other and that portion will generate heat and the lubricant which is coming in and going out is just taking that heat away so here it is acting as a coolant it reduces the friction as you know but how does it reduces the friction now here you can see that the machine is non uniform inside though it looks common it looks uniform at the surface but inside it is non uniform you may see the aspirates which are present inside the surface so when the machine is supposed to slide over each other there is this point of contact which is like aspirates come in contact and what happens is aspirates do come in contact and then there is a generation of heat at that particular time due to which that portion gets melted or welded and this thing we call it as wear and tear of machine now in order to avoid that obviously we need to use a lubricant so what happens is if you see at the top surface there is a non lubricated surface and the aspirates are coming in contact while the down you can see that the machine is lubricated that means the lubricant comes in between two aspirates and now the aspirates does not come in contact so there will be no welding or melting there will be no wear and tear and there will be no friction that is how lubricant helps in reducing friction so overall you can say that by doing so many things and pursuing so many roles it actually help us in reducing the overall running and maintenance cost of the machine now let us see how many types of lubricants are there basically you divide them on the basis of their physical state means how do they look like so they could be liquid they could be semi solid and solid as you can see in this chart the lubricant is divided in three types solid semi solid and liquid and liquid is further classified in four types so we are going to discuss them one by one in detail again the same that we are going to start with liquids so let us start with liquid followed by semi solid and then solid so in liquid you have first mineral oil animal vegetable oil animal vegetable oil as the name itself suggest here the source is either animal or vegetable so basically you are extracting oils out of them so if you see the first point they are triglycerides of higher fatty acids so they do possess fatty acid component in their structure and that is why 
they have very good oiliness but at the same time they are quite expensive if you see the examples you can quote lot many oils in case of vegetable oil let us say it could be olive oil groundnut oil soya bean oil cotton seed oil almond oil coconut oil you may say lot many and if you go with animal oil there are again many like tallow oil whale oil sperm oil etc and basically they are triglycerides of higher fatty acids now go to the next uh, classification it's mineral oil now here they don't have fatty acid in their chain rather they are lower molecular weight hydrocarbons so the chain includes 12 to 50 carbon atoms and it's simple hydrocarbon so it does not have any fatty acid in it and that is why comparatively they have poor oiliness if you see animal vegetable oil they have very good oiliness now what is oiliness right now for now you can say that oiliness is the ability to stick to the metallic surface so greater the ability to stick there in the position greater would be the quality of lubricant so basically for a good lubricant oiliness should be more it should be able to stick there at the place at the same time here they are comparatively cheap and you may quote petrol kerosene diesel etc as an example now let us see some examples again which we have already discussed like in animal oil lard oil needs put oil sperm oil is mentioned here and in vegetable oil two of the examples are taken so as for uh, their uh, nature we select them for a particular application now the third thing is a blended oil now we know that we have animal vegetable oil and mineral oil now if i uh, want to have oiliness i can select animal oil but at the same time it possess it is having good oiliness but at the same time it is very expensive and i don't want to go for an expensive thing so if i go for mineral oil they are comparatively cheap but the oiliness is not good so what happens is if the specifications are not met i have to go for the third type which is blended oil here you have to blend the oil with a additive additive which is having an added advantage add to your oil so you have to add some kind of additive in order to increase the property So let's say if I take mineral oil, since it is very uh, less in cost, and I blend some animal oil inside that mineral oil, so I'll be having a good oiliness, and at the same time it will be cheap. So now let's see how uh, it can be done. Here you can see that there are two types of uh, additives available. Uh, first is chemically active additive, and second is chemically inert additive. The chemically active additive is actually used to enhance a chemical property of a lubricant while if you want to target a physical property of lubricant you have to use chemically inert additive let's say our example is written that corrosion and oxidation inhibitor so corrosion or oxidation is a chemical property my oil is getting corroded or my oil is getting oxidized so what can i do i can add a additive which work as a inhibitor and that is chemically active additive at the same time if i target the viscosity variation with temperature so that is actually a physical property for that whatever i add is a chemically inert additive now the fourth category says synthetic oil and it comes into picture when the blended oil also does not suffice the requirement and you literally want to make altogether new oil in lab so you have to go for synthetic oil which is customizable you can prepare it in the lab you can add as many properties you want by adding different chemicals so synthetic oil is the last option when you really want to prepare the oil on it on your own and this silicon oil is nothing but an example of that oil now these are uh, nothing but some of the examples of the additives which can be used now as we have discussed you know corrosion preventer and this cost index improvers and these are nothing but if you want to introduce that property like oiliness if you want to increase you can use oiliness carriers and uh, pore point depressing like uh, you will be able to uh, get it know in my some of the next videos which i'm going to cover 
the properties uh, wherein i'll be discussing those viscosity index four point etc then you'll be able to understand this fact more for now you can just learn that there, these are the examples of blended oils the second uh, classification is semi solid semi solid uh, is obviously not liquid that means the it is neither solid nor liquid it is the in between state so first of all you need to know that why semi solid lubricant are required so now if you see the conditions it is mentioned that when oil cannot remain in the place means if you are using lubricating oil that is liquid and it does not remain in the place you need to find an alternate Similarly, there are certain situations where, uh, you know, you need to seal it from dust or dirt and the oil is not doing that or uh, there is dripping of the oil. So, in that case, we need to use another lubricant which is semi-solid in nature. And the only lubricant which is commercially available is right now grease. So, grease is an example of semi-solid lubricant. And now, uh, chemically, what are grease? Uh, just like the way we know what is so. Uh, soap is nothing but sodium or potassium sort of higher fatty acid. Similarly, grease is dispersion of soap in oil. Now, what is that? Dispersion of soap in oil means when you prepare a soap, soap we prepare using saponification. I hope you know. So, during saponification, when you are preparing your soap, you have to agitate that soap continuously with hot lubricating oil. So what are we doing is we are just mixing that soap in hot lubricating oil. So we are stirring it, we are heating it and that is how that solid soap get dispersed in that oil and it becomes semi-solid grease. So semi-solid grease is prepared by saponification of that soap in basically oil, any uh, mineral oil you can take. So based on the type of soap you have taken, the grease could be of many types. Now you can see written here lithium based, sodium based, calcium based, XL based. What does that mean? That means that the uh, soap you have used is lithium based. Soap was an ester. So you needed a fat and you needed an alkali to prepare a soap, right? So if you have taken lithium hydroxide as an alkali to prepare the soap, the soap would be lithium based soap. And the grease obviously would be lithium based grease. And likewise, if you have used NaOH in order to prepare a soap, your soap is RCONA. So if that soap you are dispersing in oil, the grease becomes sodium-based grease. And there are a lot many. These four are nothing but some of the examples of grease. Now if we discuss the types of grease one by one in very brief, uh, we can start with lithium-based so uh, grease. And as I said that the soap here would be lithium based soap in uh, nature and that is going to decide the nature of grease because the soap is different so the nature of grease is different and you can see that the lithium based grease are uh, water resistant and they are thermally stable and that is why they are used in aircraft applications while at the same time sodium based grease is not that water resistant and they are generally used in machines like ball bearings Calcium based grease is insoluble in water and it is cheapest also. So that is how you use it at a lower temperature. So you can use it in the irrigation systems like tractor, water pump because it is insoluble in water. So you can use calcium based grease there. Excel grease is a kind of synthetic grease where you use a resin, a polymer, a different kind of approach to prepare a grease. So that is kind of synthetic grease. And obviously, the application would be customizable. Uh, then it will help in working with the machines which are working for high load, etc. Now, here we can discuss some of the applications of grease. As written here, you can use it in metering pump and you know cartridge grease gun, filler pumps, etc. Now, solids is the third category. Now we are done with liquid oils, we are done with semi-solid oils. Now this is what solid means if the semi-solid also does not serve your purpose, then only you are supposed to go for solid lubrication, right? So there are certain places where semi-solid also does not work. Can you think of them? Yeah, where uh, you cannot afford to have a single dust particle. 
because I guess you know that grease accumulates so much of the dust. So first position where the machines are very sophisticated, very delicate instruments are there and you cannot afford to have a single dust particle, you have to go for a solid lubrication. And secondly, sometimes the grease also get oxidized after some temperature. You might have seen oil is coming out of the grease, right? So there are certain machines wherein grease also does not remain in the position at higher temperatures. So you need to use another uh, lubricant and the solid comes to the rescue. So solid lubricant can be used there. Now, uh, you can see the conditions here when the operating load temperature is very high. I have discussed uh, this thing and uh, they are used in dry. Now, if you see graphite here, uh, the graphite is, uh, if you see the structure, you can see that the hexagonal rings are there and in between they are joined with the weak Wonder Ball forces. So, you may call that, uh, though it is solid in nature, but the structure is very flexible and this flexibility permit the graphite to be used as a lubricant. So, when the surface is supposed to slide over each other and you put a graphite in between, since the graphite structure is flexible, the bonds are not going to distort. The bonds are not going to break. And so the graphite remains stable there in that position. Uh, since because the forces are wonder wall, so the molecule of graphite can also move along with that of machine. So that particular flexibility allows graphite to be used as a lubricant. And it is used as a dispersion. So like oil deg and aqua deg is written here. What does that mean? That means... Uh, simple powder you cannot use sometimes right so what you can do is you can simply spray a drop of oil or water in it and when you spray a single drop all of the solid particles coalesce to make a dag and that is known as oil dag you can you can you have seen the paste right but in paste the dispersion medium the liquid is more now if the liquid amount is very less you can make a dag you simply have to spray a drop of it that's it and in the last, some of the uses are discussed here where graphite is used. So you may just have a look at it. The second example is molybdenum disulfide. And again, if you see the structure, molybdenum is sandwiched between the two S8 chain. So here also, since the structure is kind of sandwiched, just like that of graphite, there is a flexibility in the structure. And that is how it can be used as a solid lubricant there are certain applications of solid lubricant you can use them in railway track joints internal combustion engines etc now if i simply want to have a quick recap of what were the classification of lubricants so uh, we have divided them in three types solid semi-solid and liquid we started with liquid liquid was further classified in four types vegetable and animal oil which were uh, extracted from vegetable and animal they were having very good oiliness and they were expensive mineral oil were uh, having lower molecular weight hydrocarbon chains so they were having poor oiliness and they were comparatively less uh, costly uh, blended oil is the third approach wherein you simply cannot use a single base oil so you have to blend it with some kind of additive in order to achieve, attain or achieve some kind of property the additives, if you remember, were of two types, uh, chemically active, if you want to target chemical property, uh, chemically inert, if you want to target a physical property. And the last one was synthetic oil, wherein you have to simply uh, prepare it in the lab. If uh, you cannot use either of the three options, you have to go for the fourth one. In semi-solid, there was no further classifications, but we discussed one example, which was grease, and the grease was dispersion of soap in oil and it was further classified in many types like lithium based, sodium based, calcium based etc. And in solid again we discussed two examples like molybdenum disulfide and uh, graphite and since the structure was quite flexible you could have used that solid as a lubricant. That's all for now. Thank you.